so 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 hello and welcome this is mr business this is episode two we learned a lot in episode one we learned about what is business and if y'all remember what's business again it is Creating value and capturing value. Your business must do both of those to survive. Well, now that we know what a business is, let's try and make a model of it. Does that sound like a good idea? Why would we want to model a business? Think about that. Why would we want to model, why model a business? Okay. What advantages or what could you get from modeling a business? What is modeling? Okay. Well, a model, in most cases, is just a graphic representation of what something is. That, and there are people that walk on runways, we also consider models. Okay. So a model is how something also could be how it should work. So sometimes when businesses get off track, they look back and say, why is our business not working anymore? And a lot of times, just because they actually strayed from their business model. They're looking at it like, oh, this is what our business used to be. This is why our business worked. We're no longer doing that. How do we get back to making our business work the way it should? Okay. So two things I like to put on business models is this. Number one, when I make a business model, it must be this. Simple. Why simple? So that you can actually understand it and so you can get the core of what it's about. Okay. A lot of times business models get so complicated you lose the core of the business. You don't understand what the core of the business is. And so people get confused and they're not able to do things that need to be done, okay? So you have to have the core of the business. The other thing with a business model, you have simple. Also, it should be graphical, okay? I mean, it should be easy to, understand, easy to understand, not undersee, but easy to understand because of the graphics. Well, actually, technically, you do see it. That's what graphics do. It's, you understand it because you're seeing it, okay? So with this, we're going to go through and make the business model. One thing I do want to be clear about there's a lot of different business models out there as far as how people do this. Academics is still arguing back and forth as far as what should be in there, how it should be in there, and this and that, and they make it overly complicated. And you know why? Because they do pay attention to lesson number one. If you pay attention to lesson number one, one thing you, all business models should focus on, this should be the core of all business models is this. How do we create value? How do we capture value? And you build off from there. That's it. That is the core. And if you have that core, they shouldn't be that far different overall. So let's go ahead and let's build ourselves a business model, shall we? All right. So what's the core again? Core is create value. So we're going to go ahead and put a little create here in the middle. We want to create. And what are we creating? We are creating value. Okay. We have create value. And after that, we have our capture value. This is the core capture value all right so if this is the core what's going to come from our core first thing first if you're going to create value you're going to have some costs okay you're going to have the cost and this is going to be very simple the cost to create value okay to create value. You have to figure out about what is your actual cost to create value. So if you're a service business, what are your costs going to mostly be? Probably salaries of the people you're paying to do the services. Okay, if you do plumbing, lawyering, all this stuff, you're going to have those costs. But also if you're like a plumber, well, you're going to have equipment costs. Okay, you're going to have tool costs. You're going to have product costs to actually install products in people's houses. You're going to have all those costs to create value. So you have to figure out what those costs are that actually create the value. Okay. Second, up here, well, the only reason we're incurring those costs is so that we can generate value. And if we generate enough value, more than our costs, then we can sell things and sell our services, sell our products, sell our goods and services, all that, okay? And actually make money, because hopefully our generated value is high enough that people want to buy it. So what you're going to typically see here, okay, let me give you an idea. Let's say... Our cost to create, let's say this ice cream shop cost us 10 cents for an ice cream cone. Okay, this is simplified. Not all the costs are going to be in there, but we're going to say it's 10 cents for an ice cream cone. Okay, let's say we sell it for 15 cents. We sell it for 15 cents. Okay, 
And the reason why the person bought it is because they see that it's a, it has a value of at least 15 or more, okay? That's the value of it, okay? Or else they wouldn't buy it. If they didn't think that it was more value, at least as valuable as 15 cents, it wouldn't get bought. But oftentimes the value will be like 20 or 25 cents or it'll be a, a multiple higher, which is why we actually have sales to begin with, okay? So that's an idea of how generate value works, okay? Over here, we have our capture value. The capture value, we're gonna have something that comes from the center. This is gonna be our revenue streams, okay? You ever heard about people rev their engines? They get them going? This is what it is, we have to get our business going. We have to have money coming in, okay? That's what revenue is. Re revenue is when you're generating money and where it's actually coming in. Okay, the other thing I want you to think about when we look at these revenue streams is why they use the word streams, okay? Well, that implies that we have multiple places we could be getting money from. You might have one really big stream and a few little ones, but streams means that there's multiple places you can get money. For, for example, you're running a store, okay? We got ourselves a store. We do sell products. That's going to be our main revenue stream is we sell products, okay? So let's say we're a grocery store. We sell a lot of food. And we make a lot of money there. But guess what else the grocery store can make money from? Ads, believe it or not. If you have a contract in place and say, hey, if we have ads here for your product, you pay us money. In fact, most grocery stores have a thing called slotting fees. Where, And if you want your product displayed for X amount of square feet in the store, you have to pay that store money. And you'll notice, like if you go to the soda aisle, okay, you'll see Coke and Pepsi. Why is it that for the same product, which is Coca-Cola, it takes up like six or seven shelves... And the next product, Pepsi, takes up six or seven shelves. And then everything else just has like one little small slot. It's because they pay for that. And they pay for it. Not only do they pay for it to take up room, they pay to actually have that in the front of the soda aisle. That's another way the store makes money. That's another revenue source. They actually charge the people as far as how to display the product. Okay, And it's worth it to them because then they're going to sell more. So that they're willing to pay that. So revenue streams are all different ways you're going to make money. We're going to talk a lot more about that in future episodes. We're going to talk about revenue streams, how to develop them, how they change, how to protect them. There's a lot to talk about with revenue streams. Okay, But we got to go on. This, this episode has a whole lot of content in it because it's a business model. Okay, Next, we have our cost. Just as we had a cost to create value, we have a cost to what? A cost to acquire. Okay, This is a big word to or acquisition. So we'll do acquisition. So... Cost of acquisition. And what are we acquiring? What's the acquisition? Okay, this is acquisition cost. Okay, acquisition. There we go. Just un at the end. Acquisition of customers. Okay. So in other words, you have to find your customers. So if you have to, as a business, do businesses pay money for ads? Yes. Do businesses pay for people to go door to door sometimes? Of course they do. Well, however much money they pay to get a customer, that's their cost of acquisition. And if you don't have a customer, you're going to have a hard time getting money from the customer. Okay? So you have cost of acquisition. So over here we have our cost to create value. We have our cost of acquisition. And this can also be included. And you can do cost of finding, cost of loyalty. And you can do all your customer costs there. And then in the middle over here, this is where you'd have overhead, overhead costs. And basically you have this nice line here where all your costs are, okay? So you could have overhead costs. And we'll talk about overhead in another episode. Overhead has to deal with fixed costs the business has to deal with no matter what. So overhead costs. And then over here, this is where we're looking at everything that's actually being generated. So this is the basic idea of a business model, okay? You start with your core. And we talked a whole lot about that core the last episode. And then you expand from that core to get these different things. Now, before this gets all muggy, muddy and messy with the business model, you know what I do? I separate the pieces out. People believe you have to keep putting more things into this, this business model we have here. Like, no, we're going to make this simple. We're going to separate it out. So we're going to go over here. We're going to separate it out. And then right next to this business model that we have here, I'd go ahead and make a block, and we're going to call it competitive advantage. Because what you'll find is competitive advantage is actually all throughout your business model. And so it makes sense to just put it off to the side and look and see where it takes a place. Okay, so what is competitive advantage? Okay, we, we, we hear about competitions. You want to beat the person next to you. You want to be better than them. 
And then advantage means that you are definitely doing better than them. So to be quite honest, all competitive advantage is just what you do better. That's all it is. But how do you do better? Where do you compete? Okay. What do you do better? So first thing is, this is what do you do better? Do you do better? That's the main question of competitive advantage. The next thing I want you to look at is there's really only two places you can compete. If I was to simplify all the ways you can compete, there's only two ways you're going to compete. Any idea what those two ways are going to be? Okay. There's only two ways. You're going to compete with quality. Okay. Quality. All right, so you're competing with quality. L-I-T-Y, which basically means how, how much better your product is, or else you're going to compete on one other way. What is that? How are you going to compete? You're going to compete on cost, or in other words, cheap. Okay? So when you go buy ice cream, you can have the fresher, better kind. So let's say you have fresh ice cream, fresh over here. How could your how could someone else compete on that? Well, if they're not going to beat you in freshness and taste, they can compete on cheap. All right? And you'll see that all over. Those are the two main ways people compete, and you have to figure out which way yours is. Because sometimes what people try and do is they try and compete on both these at the same time. Sometimes it works out a little bit. But to be quite honest, when you're looking at a customer, customers sometimes are either going to be like, I want the best tasting one, or I want the one that's the cheapest. And so either you're going to be a quality leader, or you're going to be a cost leader. And if you're in between, you have to really figure out a better business model to figure out how else you're going to compete against these people. And I'll talk about how people have successfully competed from in between before, but it's a bit complicated as far as how you go about doing that. Okay. So next, we got competitive advantage. This one's huge, and this one's often overlooked in a business model. This one is has to do with our customers. Okay. So we have customer... And it's customer, what do you do with customers? You have to actually have interactions with them. And we call these interactions customer relations. All right, customer relations. All right, so in other words, how you get along with your customers, how you keep customers. So this often deals with the customer loyalty and deals with how you find your customers, get everything. And this is just a, a box focused just for customers, okay? And the thing that's really interesting when you think about customer relations, if you have the same, all things being the same, same product, same cost, same quality, if you just have better customer relations, people choose you. And this is a good example at stores such as Walmart and Target. Okay, those are two very common stores, sell a lot of the same things. But if you feel you're being treated at a store better and the prices are the same, you're going to go to the store that has better customer relations. Okay? So customer relations, and we'll get a whole lot more to that in another episode. I don't want to spend too much time because we have so many small parts in this episode to do it being a business model. But customer relations, right there. All right, next, you're going to do this. And this is the last thing I want to cover on a business model. Unique value. This one is probably the hardest to understand because it's, it's relatively new to the business world. But we're seeing that it's very, very important. And what unique value really comes down to is this. It's not the best. If you notice the word is not best value, it's not most quality, it's not cheapest, so it's not the best. Believe it or not, unique value has nothing to do with doing the best. What unique value has to do is being the best customized Solution, okay? So that means something that's really made for what people want, okay? And when you think about this, okay, I'm just going to do it as best customized, make it easier for you guys, best customized. Um, with best customized, you don't need to be the best. You have to be what's best for what the customer actually needs. And that's where we get into where we call more of niche markets. You go into what your your primary thing is that you do that no one else does. And it gets a bit complicated, but I'll start giving you some examples of this, okay? Um, back in the day, and this is what's interesting, you had Quiznos. Quiznos is no longer operating. There might be some people still under the Quiznos brand, but as a parent company, there's no longer there. 
And Quiznos tried to bring some unique value, okay? They said, what is everyone else doing? Well, they got their subs, and, but they're not toasted, all right? And so Quiznos started toasting their subs, and for a little while, people went to, to Quiznos because they were the only sub shop that was toasting subs. And it was amazing. So what did Subway do? Think about your Subway, and you see Quiznos with a unique value they're offering their customers. You're going to take away its uniqueness. So then Subway said, hey, we'll toast subs as well. Quiznos no longer had its unique value, and it wasn't able to outcompete Subway on quality and costs one way or the other, and they ended up losing. So when you have a unique value, you have to figure out how to make yours unique and also how to keep it, okay? And we'll have more of these talks about unique value and how people generate them, how to keep them and protect them and things like that. So, but overall, that's all there is as far as the whole business model, okay? So let's go ahead and do a quick review. Quick review at the end. We have our core, which is capture value. We have our, or sorry, not capture, create value, then capture value. Of course, they look the same because they have the same initials. And then we ended up going up into here with generated value. And then we came down into here and we had what? What did we have? We had costs of value. Okay, cost of value. We had costs on this side, costs of getting the customers, okay? Over here we had our revenue streams, RS revenue streams. Okay, this is customer costs. Okay, and that was the basic one. And then underneath we had competitive advantage. And then after that, we had our customer relations. And after that, we had unique value. Okay, if you look at this, I did just did simple abbreviations so it all fits on here pretty easy so you get clear so you guys can see. But this is a business model right here. That's all it is. That is the main components of a business model. And when you look at it, you can start to see where your business model succeeds and where it might start failing. You can kind of see the strengths and weaknesses. You can see the opportunities. You can start seeing threats to your business as you start looking at your business model. And we will take a look more at what a SWOT analysis is on some of the future episodes. Because a lot of people do SWOT analysis, but they don't actually do them correctly. They don't really provide value. But this is what we're looking at right now as far as the business model. This is the way I like to do business models. It keeps it clean, keeps it simple, covers everything. As you see here, it all fits on one piece of paper. So, and you can make it look really nice and clean. All right. Now, your part, okay? I want to put it right here as far as the questions, what I'm hoping to see in the comments, okay? First question I want you guys to address in the comments. This is my question for you guys. I want you guys to debate this, discuss it. But I want to put down, what do you believe is, what is the most, most important part of a business model, okay? What is the most important part? of a business model, okay? What is it? What's the most important part? Number two, number two, here we go. Here's number two. We ready? Most important part of a business model, number two, okay? What successful business models have you seen? Okay, what successful business models? Okay, what does a successful business model look like? Actually, I'm running out of room here, so I'll just put, uh, what business models? have been successful. This model's, we're gonna look at both here, we're gonna produce success. And what ones you feel have failed or have seen fail, okay? Successful. And which ones you have seen fail? All right. So that's about all there is looking at this hopefully this made sense to you all if it didn't let me know we can always fix and improve businesses aren't perfect neither as mr business we just move on and try and do what we need to do to get things going thank you all for watching we'll try and get some better episodes for you and also remember if we get enough viewers and subscribers we'll start doing business today we actually look at the business articles out in the world and analyze them based on business theory okay take care everyone and again if you got a couple minutes, you can always learn business with Mr. Business.